Hi, I'm Ben from the Android Developer Relations team, and today I'm here to give you an update on the current state of Jetpack Compose. If this is your first time hearing about Jetpack Compose, Jetpack Compose is Android's modern new toolkit to build user interfaces easier and faster. Version 1.0 went stable in July 2021. And in July this year, 1.2 went stable as well. So things are moving quickly. Jetpack Compose allows you to write apps faster. You can do more with less code, thanks to its declarative syntax. You just describe what you want your UI to be, and Compose takes care of the rest. It was built from the ground up to support all things Android developers need for modern Android development. Material design, dark theme, animations, and more. Since we launched, we've been asked one question more than anything else. Any ideas what it might be? That's right. Should you use Views or Compose? It's an interesting question, so let's dive into that. We believe that Compose is the future of Android UI development. It's stable, ready to be used in production, and has a broad feature set. So, if you are just starting to learn Android, start with Compose. If this sounds like you, we have a course just for you called Android Basics with Compose. It is available at Google slash ABC. If you're building a new app, start with Compose. And if you're building a new screen, use Compose. No matter where you are in your journey, do consider using Compose because the code you write with views will become tech debt. So when should you not use Compose? Well, we're still working on some advanced features like navigation transitions or text auto sizing. So if you can't implement something in Compose, you might also have to use views. But if it can be implemented in Compose, we think you should use Compose. But before you do jump straight to views, check out the public roadmap. And if a feature you're looking for is not in the roadmap, then please create or star a bug for it. We want to make sure that what was possible with views is possible with Compose as well. So it's not really views or Compose. But should I use only Compose? Or should I use Views and Compose? Okay, so why do we recommend that you build with Compose? Compose allows you to write less code and accelerate your development. It's intuitive and powerful. But don't just take my word for it. Let me show you some real examples of Compose in action. The first thing I want to show you is how expressive Compose is. You can do a lot with a little code. This makes it easy to understand and maintain. Let's look at the For You screen. We start with our gradient background. A scaffold that provides the layout structure. It allowed us to easily add a top bar with the needed elements. Inside the scaffold, we have the content of the screen a lazy column that fills the entire size of the screen. The lazy column contains two things, the interest selection and the feed. In very little code, we implemented the basic structure of this screen in a recycling list of content. It's so easy to understand how the content is laid out. With Compose, you just describe your UI. So on this screen, where we have to show a bio if we have one, we just use an if. You can do so much with very little code, and it's all here. There's no XML, no layout manager, no adapter, or other files to jump into. Compose code is just so easy to read, understand, and maintain. Compose is able to be so expressive because of the very opinionated way in which the Compose APIs themselves are written. 
The Compose engineering team created a set of guidelines for writing Compose libraries. And when you're building UIs with Compose, you quickly realize that you end up building a library of components specific to your app. So you and yourself become a Compose library developer. So check out and follow these API guidelines for yourself. Composables are just functions. They don't belong to a class and you write them as top level functions. Because of this, it means that you no longer have to restrict defining your UI in an activity or fragment. With Compose, you can have a single activity application. For example, the Now and Android app has a main activity, its only activity, and the only thing that activity does is call the root composable. That's all. If you have multiple activities or fragments in your app, fear not, you can of course still use Compose. Our samples actually cover a variety of cases to show you how this would work. Compose interrupts with views, allowing you to migrate at your own pace. You can use Compose from views or views from Compose. Even more, libraries and APIs that you'd expect to work with Compose, like view models, navigation, Kotlin coroutines, all integrate smoothly in the Compose world. So you can start adopting it when and where you want. Another place where Compose is extremely opinionated is in the UI components it provides. Compose offers an implementation of material design. That is the switches, text fields, buttons, and so on. All follow material design out of the box. There is no non-material button. You've got full support for the Material 2 components and you'll soon have the same level of support for Material 3 with new and improved components. And of course, dynamic color. To reflect your product's brand in your app, you can customize the color, typography and shape attributes of the material theme. The material components use the values you provide when retrieving the default values. While material is our recommended design system, if you feel like you need to customize your design even more, that's totally possible. There are several approaches you might take. Extending material theme with additional theming values. Replacing one or more of the material systems, that's colors, typography, or shapes, with custom implementations while keeping the other ones. Or you can go fully custom and implement a custom design system to completely replace material theme. The Now and Android design system is primarily based on Material Design 3, but customizes some components and uses gradient backgrounds. For example, the Now and Android filter chip configures the type, color, and border, and it displays a check when it is selected. To implement this, we first created our Now and Android filter chip with the selected icon, the shape, the correct typography, and themed it with our colors, and all of these parameters are provided by default. There's no more hunting around for the correct XML attribute to customize. They're all here, all available, type safe, and easily discoverable via autocomplete. Not only is it easy to customize individual components, but Compose makes it straightforward to customize your layouts for different devices. We recommend building responsive UIs to ensure your app looks good no matter what device it runs on. Compose helps with building top-level adaption and with building responsive components. It makes it easy to change what you show based on the available space. For example, the Now and Android app switches from bottom navigation to nav rail on larger screens. So you can just use an if statement and combine your different composables. It's that easy. It's also much easier to build components that respond to the available space, not just adapt to the entire screen size. 
For example, you can change the number of columns displayed using the lazy vertical grid components. Compose makes it so much easier to adapt your UI using standard Kotlin control flow. It's just code. But these days, it's not just the screen size that changes. The entire form factor can often change. Compose makes it so much easier to support multiple form factors, be it foldables or even wear devices. Compose for Wear OS 1.0 went stable in July 2022 and includes everything you need to build a modern Wear OS app easier than ever before. Buttons, cards, sliders, and more. For more information on Compose for Wear OS, check out the following link. So that was an introduction to Compose. But now you might be asking, is anyone actually using this? We have seen great adoption across a large range of apps from Twitter, Airbnb, and even our own Play Store app. Andrew Flynn, tech lead on the Google Play team said, Compose has been a boon for our team's developer happiness and a big step up for code quality and health. Now, let's have a look at what was just released in Compose 1.2. We know how important fonts are for your branding. Up until now, you had to either rely on fonts delivered with the Android platform, which can obviously vary based on different devices, or bundle fonts with your app, which increases the APK size. Starting with Compose 1.2, you can use downloadable fonts just like with Views. You can express your brand at its best while taking advantage of shared font caches and dynamic font resolution. To use downloadable fonts from Google Fonts, first add this dependency. You will then need to define a font provider. This includes a certificate to ensure your fonts are coming from the correct server. You can also implement your own downloadable font provider if needed. With that provider, you can easily use downloadable fonts as if they were normal fonts. If the requested font isn't in the font cache, Compose will automatically download it and recompose your text when it has been downloaded successfully. Starting with Compose 1.2, embedding a scrolling composable in a view-based coordinator layout is much smoother and things like collapsing toolbars are easy to set up. We know this was a common pain point during migration, and so we are happy to say this should now be fixed. We are still working on improving all the possible permutations of views, recycler views, and lazy lists, so please do continue to give us feedback. We've expanded beyond lazy column and lazy row, and we've added a lazy grid. We've also made public the lazy APIs that power these composables, which allows you to implement your own custom lazy layouts if that's what you need to do. Lazy grids in Compose support two types of sizing, fixed, where as your device size changes, the cells resize to always maintain a fixed number of columns, or adaptive, where you set the size of the cell and Compose will automatically rearrange your grid if your device size changes. This often happens during rotation. An important feature on today's modern devices, edge to edge, made possible with window insets. Previously, we provided a window insets API via the accompanist library, our experimental labs-like repository. Now, that module has just graduated to Compose Foundation, so handling window insets is easier than ever. You might have been in this situation before. You've put your app into full screen mode and suddenly your content is rendering underneath the system UI. Well, in Compose, this is very easy to handle. Modifier.statusbar padding will automatically add padding to your component for the status bar. 
and modifier.navigation bars padding will do the same thing for the navigation bars. But here's the even better part. If you're just using the material components inside a scaffold, in Material 3, we handle most of this for you. There's no more work to do. Compose 1.2 also brings a new text brush API for achieving complex text painting effects. There are two main components you'll be working with. Brush which provides it access to a set of default brushes like linear gradient and radial gradient. Or if you need something even more custom, there is shader brush. When the default brushes are not enough, you can extend this class to implement your own custom brush. Here are some examples of the brushes we provide by default. Horizontal, vertical, radial, and sweep. And of course, this being composed you can animate any of these parameters to create whatever effect you desire. And now a look at what we have in the next release, Compose 1.3. Compose 1.3 is currently in its final stages and we hope to release it very soon. Shared element transitions are another beloved feature of the Android UI toolkit allowing you, for instance, to navigate in and out of a detail view, guiding the user's attention through the animation. While this is not yet available in Compose 1.3, you can now look at the experimental APIs that we are developing to power this in a future version. Compose 1.2 has a new movable content API, which enables us to power this transition. And Compose 1.3 has what we are calling Look Ahead Layout, a way to lay out content ahead of time and control how the layout change happens. Compose 1.3 also brings a new lazy layout, Staggered Grid. A staggered grid allows you to lay out cells with variable heights or widths. It's easy to use and works just like the lazy grid composable. It can work with both a fixed number of columns or rows or you can use adaptive, just like we saw with the standard lazy grid. The difference is that your heights can be variable. This demo uses random heights which we have stored in a list. There is also a horizontal version of staggered grid as well, which works the same, but instead of variable height, you can have variable widths. Other items in Compose 1.3 include big modifier performance changes, hardware input improvements, and focus handling improvements. Lots of improvements all around. In development in parallel to Compose is Material 3 for Compose. Material 3 Compose is available now in beta. We hope to release a stable version of this library as part of 1.3. A major change in Material 3 is the different styles of Top App Bar. You have Centered, Top App Bar, which is the default, Medium, and Large. They also easily support a collapsing toolbar style. To achieve this, to achieve this, you define a top app bar behavior. In this demo, we are using enter always scroll behavior. Once we pair this with our lazy column via a nested scroll connection, our top app bar will automatically expand and collapse as we scroll. It's as easy as that. Of course, Material 3 also comes with dynamic color. Because this is Compose, it's easy to support dynamic color in your app. We can just use an if. So if dynamic color is available, we use the dynamic color scheme. And you just end up passing your color scheme into your theme and that's it. With that small change, dynamic color is now working in your app. 
We also have new tools coming out to support your development in Compose. The Layout Inspector will now show you both recomposition counts and highlight composables that are recomposing. So I have here the JetSnack sample app. And to check out this new feature, let's open up the Layout Inspector. I'll just resize it to make it more obvious to see. So if we scroll this app up and down, we can see this purple box appearing. And what that purple box is, is actually the Layout Inspector highlighting a composable that is recomposing. And clicking on it, we can see that it it's constantly recomposing every time we scroll. That's this 167 down here. 167 recompositions have happened so far. Double clicking it, and then command clicking into title. Now, in Compose, it's important to defer the reading of state values for as long as possible. If you want to know more, please read our performance documentation. But just to quickly fix this here, what I'm going to do is move this scroll read inside the offset modifier. Now if we rerun the app, wait for the layout inspector to reconnect, navigate back to the detail screen, and scroll up and down again, we can see no more highlighting and opening up just to double check, we can also see no recomposition count increasing. So we've solved the problem using the new feature of the Layout Inspector, recomposition highlighting and recomposition counts. We also have a new feature of the profiler, composition tracing. Previously, if you tried to take a system trace of Compose, you would just see one block for recomposition, but have no idea which composables were recomposing. Now, you can see the full composable breakdown of your recomposition. This is great for finding which composable is taking more time than you expect. The flame chart also shows composables and will point you to the file and line number of each one, allowing you to dig into what your problem is. Let's have a look at a demo. Okay, so we're back in the JetSnack sample app, and this time we're gonna look at this transition here between the home screen and the detail screen. So we've seen on devices that this can look a bit janky, and we know we're running in release mode, so there's something else going on. So let's open up the profiler, and we'll take a system trace, and using the new composition tracing, we will be able to trace this transition and see which composables are taking a long time and causing the jank. So I'll open up the profiler and we'll zoom in onto where our work is happening. Now we can see here, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening in composing of this snack detail screen. And we've got a whole bunch of snack items being composed. And that is what is taking up the majority of the time in this trace. So now that we know that, let's go and have a look at what the snack collection does. And we can see that it's just using a row. And so what happens is instead of lazily composing these items, it's making them all at the start. And so if we change it to a lazy row, this should definitely improve the initial rendering performance of our snack detail screen. So I'll quickly just change it to a lazy row and we will rerun and we'll take the trace again and see if the time for that initial composition has improved. 
So let's open up the profiler. We'll start a new trace. We'll ensure system trace is selected. We'll click record, waiting for the trace to begin. And then we'll go and enter our detail screen again. Stop the trace and let's have a look at what's happening. And so now we can see that the initial composition of that detail screen is a much smaller bar. So we'll zoom in to be able to see it. And now we can see the snack detail screen is taking 16.35 milliseconds. And if we go have a look at what it was taking, so we'll zoom in again to be able to spot it. And so previously the snack detail screen was taking 412 milliseconds. So a huge improvement. So 412 milliseconds before and now afterwards, 16.35. And so that is all that has to happen for that crossfade to actually go ahead. And we did that by moving some of the work later on by lazy loading it. Now this was a slightly contrived example because we were running on an emulator so that you could still see it on screen. But it just shows you the power of composition tracing in the Android Studio Profiler. So that's it for an update on the state of Jetpack Compose. Remember, our roadmap is public. And so if you ever want to know what we're working on, go check it out at Google slash Compose Roadmap. If you're excited to start with Compose, check out the following resources. Our homepage is at Google slash Compose. If you're an existing Android developer and you just want to use Compose in your app, the recommended course is Google slash Compose Pathway. And if you're new to Android development and you want to learn Android as well as Compose, check out our Android Basics with Compose Code Lab at Google slash ABC. Thanks for your time. I hope that was useful and you enjoy the rest of the conference.